friends, it is Natalie and I'm here to bring you yet another book haul. I'm a little embarrassed to tell you, but yeah, buying books has become my coping mechanism for dealing with the insanity going on in the world. And talking about all the insanity going on in the world, I do have some thoughts and comments I would like to make about it. If you're not interested in hearing my opinions about what's going on in the world, you can simply, I'll put a timestamp and you can simply just fast forward and get straight to the books. I know some people are like, I, I'm coming and watching booktube videos to escape the news, not to hear other people's opinions. I understand. But if you are interested in hearing what I have to say about what's going on in the world, please stay tuned. So I'm just going to say that 2020 has been pretty awful. I mean, we went from worrying about so many people dying of this coronavirus, uh, then we are worrying about people losing their jobs, losing their small businesses. We're all stuck in, we're quarantined, and just when we think it can't get any worse, we watch George Floyd get murdered right there on the TV or YouTube screen, whatever you're watching, you could see it happening and it was awful. And so I have to say, I'm not really impressed with 2020 so far, but I wanna tell you a little story about what has been happening with me. I haven't been making a lot of videos this week, but I have been watching a lot of videos this week and something interesting kind of happened. Um, Nicole from Girly Girl Bookworm put out a video, I believe she called it, let's just talk about it, I will be putting it down in the description, where she really was just pouring her heart out about just how upsetting this whole George Floyd thing was. Um, she talked a little bit about the um, book outlet. I don't know if you guys know about the book outlet, but definitely watch her video and see what book outlet is doing because it was pretty awful what they did. But back to my story of what has been happening the last couple of days. So yes, uh, girly girl bookworm, she put up a video saying something like, let's talk about it. And she talked about how, you know, we, we need to support uh, black businesses and we just need to do better. But what was shocking is when I clicked on the video, I clicked on it really early where it didn't have that many views and she already had 11 dislikes. And she had a couple people commenting that they were unsubbing. It was just really nasty. And this is, I saw this before I watched the video. So knowing that it had 11 dislikes already, I thought, oh my gosh, what is she about to say? She must be about to say something really controversial. Like I'm literally just like on the edge of my seat. Like, what is she gonna say? Poor Nicole, what did you do? Did you stick your foot in your mouth? What did you do? And I'm watching the video and it was just heartfelt and kind and she was talking about how she wants to be better and how we should all be better and i kept waiting you know to see what the controversy was and then the video was over and then i'm sitting there you know scratching my head going i am so confused why does she have all these dislikes why are there a few comments that are really pretty nasty in her comment section so i found one of the not so nice comments and i decided that i was going to reply and i'll be honest Initially, I was gonna say something pretty nasty because I'm one of those ride or die friends. I know I've only known Nicole from her channel for a couple of months, but once I consider you a friend, if somebody does anything or says anything, I feel like I need to defend you. But I stopped myself from writing something nasty back because I thought, what is that going to accomplish? Then we just have nasty comments going back and forth on her page. I don't think Nicole would really appreciate it. So I decided I would take the high road and I just said, this is not an attack in any way. I'm just really curious why this video is so bothersome to you. And I really thought I was gonna get a nasty comment back. I really did. But the opposite happened. I got a comment that was like this long, almost a novel um, on the comment page. And she said, well, I just feel like people are telling me how I should think and feel. I feel like people are telling me what I should do. Uh, she also said, I feel like a lot of people are making these kind of videos because they just want to look good, you know, and it's not that they really care. And she went into quite detail of why these videos were bothering her. Um, Nicole also jumped in when she saw that this conversation was taking place and said, I'm not doing this because, you know, I want a pat on the back. Um, I'm not trying to tell you how to think or feel. I'm just trying to, you know, she has almost 2000 subscribers. And I think she felt the way we all feel especially this year when we see all these horrible things happening, you feel very powerless and you wanna help, but you don't know how to help. So that's why I think so many YouTubers are thinking, well, I have my channel, you know, I have, you know, Nicole has almost 2000 subscribers. Maybe if I talk about how I feel and what I think would be a good thing, then maybe I won't feel so powerless. So 
Um, she did, in fact, leave a great deal of resources in her description that I'm going to have down in my description. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to think or feel. I'm sure you guys are probably feeling similarly to me. You're just like, what is going on in the world? What can I do to make it better a little bit? And I'll tell you what, when I went down into her resources, some of them were petitions, some of them were like where you could donate money. Afterwards, I felt just a little bit less powerless and made me feel a little bit better. So I am going to leave those resources down. So if you fe are feeling powerless about what's going on and you want to help, they're there, you can use them. But I'm not gonna tell you what to think or feel. And one of the other things I said um, in this conversation that was going on with like three different people was I think the biggest problem in our country right now, and I can't claim this because I'm not the person who said it, I just agree with the person who said it, a political commentary person said, one of the biggest problems in this country right now is people are not having authentic conversations. For like, if you do not like what somebody is saying, instead of saying, hey, I really don't agree with you and this is why, we're just saying, I want nothing to do with you, you're canceled and you know, want, there's no conversation. And I think it is important to have a conversation. I always say, you know, when I get a dislike on my videos, I don't know what they're disliking. I would much rather they leave a comment saying, you know, I don't agree with you on this, this, and this, or I didn't like the fact that this happened in the video. Let me know what you disliked. Have a conversation with me because I don't know what the dislike means. You know, if you just don't like me, then I don't know, don't watch my videos. If you don't like the way I reviewed the book, you know, tell me, let's have a conversation. And so that's kind of the message that I want to send out. Please don't be so reactionary. Take the time to listen. I felt so bad. There were people who were doing book outlet hauls who people were going on their channels and making comments saying, you're a racist. And the people who were doing the hauls were going, I don't know what you're talking about. Or, there was, or they said something like, I just now found out about this whole book outlet thing. And to sit there and say somebody's racist because they didn't know what was going on with Book Outlet and was just simply putting a haul out, that's very reactionary. Instead of, you know, going, hey, you're a racist, blah, 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 just say, hey, I just wanted to let you know, were you, you know, did you know what was going on with the Book Outlet? This is what's been happening. Give people a chance. I'm really, I'm getting so tired of people just shutting, shutting things down and canceling people. It's just ridiculous. Have the conversation, please. It's so important. And if you would like to have a conversation about what's going on in the world, you, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you either through the comments. Um, I leave my Instagram down there if you want to do it through DM, but I'm always willing to have a conversation. I'm a very open-minded person and I like to hear what other people have to say. So that's my two cents and I will get off my soapbox. I hope soapbox is the right, <laughs> is that the right thing we're saying? I hope I'm saying it right. Um, but anyway, and let's get on to these books. All right, this first book is, I believe was in my April Lit Joy, and it is Bone Crier's Moon, which I think has a beautiful cover. And the main character in this is Elise, who is a bone crier. And a bone crier is somebody who ferries the dead either to heaven or hell, even though it's a different kind of heaven and a different kind of hell in this book. But basically their job is to ferry the dead to where they need to go so they don't bother the living. But in order to have that privilege, even though that sounds like a job to me, not a privilege, but they see it as a privilege, uh, they have to kill their true love. And the way that kind of works is that they go onto a bridge and there's some kind of enchanting dance or something they do that calls their true love to them. And if they wanna have a child, then they meet up and maybe they stay with them for a year, have the child, and then they kill them. Or if the person's like, I don't wanna have kids, then they kill them right then and there. So that's our main character, Elise, and it's coming up to where she has to find her true love and do all of this. And then we have another character named Bastion who witnessed his father being killed by a bone crier and his whole life he has been dedicated to getting revenge on these bone criers. And obviously these two, two um, people's paths are going to cross. I've only read about half of it. It's really good so far. So definitely Bone Crier's Moon might be a book you want to check out. All right, another book that I got from Lip Joy, I think, think this was the May book. I don't know if I'm getting these right. Um, the Empire of Dreams. This is a YA fantasy and I forgot to say, this is a YA fantasy. In this book, our main character is named Red Sparkle Stone. 
that's what her name is in the synopsis, and she's getting ready to be adopted by the royal family. I guess she spent most of her life and childhood running from sinister sorcerers, which I don't know exactly what that is or what that entails, but it sounds pretty awful. And she's supposed to be adopted by the royal family. I'm not sure why or how, but something happens and everything crumbles. The adoption is blocked, so she decides that she is going to join the royal guard, which is this elite fighting force that she has to do a year of training before she can join and no woman has survived the first year of training. So that sounds pretty good. Now this one I have not cracked open at all, but if you have let me know, it definitely sounds promising. All right, this next book is a YA urban fantasy. It was recommended to me by the TBR service that I've been using. It sounds like something I would like, so I think they're doing a good job. Our main character is Alexis and the synopsis says that the two things that she relies on in her life are her best friends and the magic that they share. But somehow their magic goes sideways and a boy is accidentally killed and she and her friends have got to figure out a way to either reverse it or figure out how to fix this big mistake they've made with their magic. So I really do like urban fantasies. If you're one of the people out there who are going, I'm not sure what's an urban fantasy. From what I understand, a urban fantasy, which is also known as magical realism, is when it's fantasy and there's magic and whatnot, but it's happening in the real world. Um, whereas high fantasy is kind of like Lord of the Rings where it's in Middle Earth. A lot of high fantasy books within the first couple pages will have a map of what their world looks like. So that's my understanding of the difference between high fantasy and urban fantasy slash magical realism. Um, and I do think usually I do prefer the urban fantasies a little bit more. Not that I haven't enjoyed some, not that I haven't enjoyed some high fantasy books. I have, but I do think Overall, I do prefer urban fantasies. All right, I have another YA book, but this is not a fantasy. This is a mystery thriller and it's called The Cheerleaders. And I love what it says on the back. It says, beautiful, talented, popular, dead. <laughs> like that cannot not grab your attention, right? So in this book, our main character is Monica. And five years ago, her older sister, who was a cheerleader, um, died along with four other cheerleaders in three separate incidents. And I guess it was so upsetting to the small town that they decided not to have cheerleaders anymore. But then Monica finds some strange letters in her stepdad's desk and he works for the police. She finds her sister's old cell phone and finds some weird messages on it. And there's a new friend at school who seems to know a lot about that time because there was a lot of controversy about these events that happened. And so she, I guess, is going to figure it out. So I love, I love YA and I love mystery thrillers, so I think I should love this. All right, now I have a YA dystopian fantasy called Trail of Lightning. This is yet another book that was recommended to me by my TBR service. And I say it's dystopian because it says most of the world is covered by water now and monsters are roaming the earth that is left. So that don't sound good. And our main character supposedly is Maggie who has some supernatural abilities and she hunts monsters. And she's called to this small town to help find a missing girl. It says that she ends up uncovering some things about the monster that are so much more terrifying than what she thought. So that sounds really good. If you've read it, let me know. Once again, this sounds pretty promising. Now into the world of adult books for a moment. I have A Good Marriage by Kimberly McCrate. Obviously it was from uh, Book of the Month. I love Kimberly McCrate. She did the book, um, I believe it was called Recovering Amelia, which I really recommend. It was one of my favorite books. And so when I saw she had a new book out, I had to read it. Our main character in this book is Lizzie, who is a lawyer who is called by her ex-boyfriend who is being accused of murdering his wife and he wants her to represent him and be his defense. But supposedly this book is going to do a lot of back and forth as far as time is concerned. So we do get to meet the wife who eventually gets murdered and hopefully this will be a great book. I think I've given five stars to every book that she's done. So I'm hoping this is another five stars. All right, I have another YA urban fantasy. I have This Coven Won't Break, which is a sequel to a book that I absolutely loved. These Witches Don't Burn, and I think they are both beautiful together. Now, if you remember when I reviewed These Witches uh, Don't Burn or Won't Burn in one of my monthly wrap ups, I said, oh, this book was just so much fun. And I don't wanna tell you too much because obviously in a sequel, if I tell you what's going on in the sequel, it would kind of ruin what happens in the first book. But the main character in these books is Hannah, who is an elemental witch. 
and she's dealing in the first book with all these weird things that seem to be threatening her coven and she's trying to figure it out while also dealing with a really bad breakup. Her and her girlfriend have broken up and she's very upset. This is all the first book. And I said, oh, this book was just such a fun read. So I had to get the sequel. And like I said, I love the cover on this one. I think it's also really pretty. I think it also, because this cover really represents this book well because it is a fun book to read. And I think the covers kind of capture the fun, if you know what I mean. I just think that really is perfect for this book. All right, let's go back to some adult mystery thriller. I got Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. Everybody has been telling me that I should read Riley Sager, that that would be a good author for me. So Lock Every Door, lots of fun. I love the hot pink. So supposedly in this, our main character is Jules. She finds an ad in Craigslist to be an apartment sitter in a very nice uh, building in Manhattan. And when she gets to see what the apartment is just like, you know, a, an apartment that probably would cost, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to rent, like really, really posh. And then to top that, they're going to pay her this outrageous amount of money to live in this apartment for free, which it sounds too good to be true. And I'm sure it's going to be too good to be true because in the synopsis, it says apartment sitters in her building start disappearing. So I'm very interested. I hope I like Riley Sager as much as everybody says I'm going to. Speaking of Riley Sager, I also got the book Final Girls. This is another adult mystery thriller. Our main character is named Quincy who goes on some kind of vacation with five of her friends and she's the only one who survives it. They all get butchered in some ugly way. And the press are the ones who give her the name Final Girl. And there are some other girls that also survived crazy, where somebody came in and butchered everybody, that survived crazy scenarios like that, who are part of the Final Girls. There's like three of them that they call the Final Girls. And then one of the Final Girls dies, and the other one shows up on Quincy's doorstep. So we're going to have to uncover that maybe there's a lot more going on here than we thought. So very excited. I love how his covers are so bright. Now, I have not done a wrap up since, gosh, maybe February. So uh, in the next week or so, I'm just gonna do a spring wrap up, kind of like when I did a fall wrap up, because I haven't even talked to you guys about the owls. But um, one of the books that I read was A Discovery of Witches, which I adored. I'll talk more about it in that video. So I did go ahead and get the sequel, A Shadow of Night. Once again, I can't tell you about the sequel because I would ruin the first one. But the main character is Diana Bishop. She comes from a long line of witches, but she has decided to not, you know, embrace her magic. She is more scholarly. She's at Oxford studying the history of science, and supposedly she uncovers a book from the archives that has some kind of magical elements to it. And suddenly every magical creature seems to be just following her. And there was something special about that book. And one of the main creatures that follows her is a vampire, a vampire named Matthew. And he is very good, I guess, as, as explaining to her what is going on, why the book is important. Don't want to tell you too much more because I could probably tell you the whole story. But I really, really loved it. And they're big books and I highly recommend it. Now my next book, I don't know if it's YA or adult, it is called The Tenth Girl, maybe you know, and I'll tell you why it's confusing on whether it's YA or adult. It's supposed to be a psychological thriller with a haunting twist. So our main character, I believe her name is Mavi, and she's uh, escaped a military regime because she was living in Buenos Aires and something happened and they have her mother and she had to escape. This is all I'm getting from the synopsis. A little bit confused. But when she escapes, she becomes a school teacher at a very isolated school that is on the tip of South America. So if I'm saying, I don't know if it's YA or adult, since obviously if she's a teacher, she's an adult, but it's also happening in a school full of teenagers, which could make it YA. If you read it, let me know. Honestly, I don't really care. I read YA and adult, and I think the synopsis sounds great. So like I said, she's a young teacher at this finishing school and she's been warned, do not roam around at night. And I guess after a while, she notices that some of the teachers and the students are actually acting like they're possessed. So I'm sure she has to get down to the bottom of it. I love that cover, that's super spooky. Um, and yeah, if you've read it, let me know. All right, I have in another adult mystery thriller, I Know You Know by Gilly McMillan, who I thought I'd read all of Gilly McMillan's books until I saw this and realized, huh, I guess I missed one. So supposedly, 20 years ago in Bristol, two 11 year olds are brutally murdered and their bodies are dumped at like a dog race track and they find whoever they think did it and arrested the man who did it. 
But supposedly, decades later, there's still a lot of questions about what really went down. And that's where the main character is gonna come in. Our main character is Cody. The two 11-year-olds who died were his best friends. And all the loose ends and all the questions are haunting him to the point that he's like, I need to go back to Bristol and I need to get some answers. So it sounds really great. I'm sure it's Gilly McMillan. I'm going to love it. If you've read it, let me know. All right, next I have a YA fantasy slash space opera. I think that would be the best description. It's how Rory Thorne destroyed the multiverse. So supposedly the main character Rory is like the great, 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 great granddaughter of Sleeping Beauty. And in the Sleeping Beauty family, there supposedly has not been a girl born in the family like I'm guessing centuries since they are now out in space. So like Sleeping Beauties, it's a tradition in their family that when a girl is born, that they bring in the 13 fairies to do their blessings. I guess it's going to be similar to Sleeping Beauty where one of the fairies is gonna be kind of a trickster. I believe she's gonna give her the ability to, I don't know, not be able to lie or always tell the truth, which sounds good, might turn out bad. So she doesn't get cursed to fall asleep. Hers is completely different but then her father is assassinated and she becomes betrothed to a prince on a distant planet and she's trying to figure out what all is happening, I guess politically, who murdered her father. It sounds like there's a lot going on in this book. Sounds like a very interesting um, plot or storyline. So I can't wait. If you've read it, definitely let me know if it's good. Now, last year I read Alexa Dunn's book, Brightly Burning, which was a retelling of Jane Eyre, but in space. So when I found out she had another book come out, I guess this came out in March, called The Stars We Steal, I had to get a hold of it. This one also takes place in outer space. Our main character is Princess Leone. She is the heir to a fated European ship and her family has spent so much money that they are literally on the brink of being, you know, bankrupt, I guess, how you'd be bankrupt in outer space. So her only solution is to find a rich guy to marry. And she's not shallow, she needs money because she has some invention that she wants to get a patent for and I guess she needs to buy the patent in order to have her invention. So that's her motivation to try to find a bachelor that has the money. Sorry about that, I know most of you know my son has autism and I'm here by myself with him, so I, he's kind of walking around being a little bit loud, so that's what you're hearing. So what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so she's looking for a lucky bachelor to save her and her family. So once again, if you've read it, let me know. Now this next book, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail because I know everybody's talking about it, and it's The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which is a prequel to The Hunger Games. If you're one of those few people that do not know what I'm talking about, <laughs> Uh, this is supposed to be set at the 10th Hunger Games. If you need some reference, the Hunger Games uh, trilogy is set, I think, in the 75th and 76th, so quite a long time ago. And in this one, President Snow is the main character. He's not the president yet, but he is the main character, and he's going to help out with the 10th Hunger Games. And I have read it, and I will give you my opinions on it when I do my wrap-up. All right, I got myself another YA urban fantasy. This is Wicked As You Wish. The magical kingdom of Avalon is encased in ice due to an evil snow queen. So the only survivor of the royal family is the crown prince. So the crown prince and his supporters are hiding out in, wait for it, wait for it, Arizona. Weren't expecting that, were you? His best friend is named Tella, who she's just a regular Arizona girl, who is one of the few people who knows who he really is. But hope is reignited when Avalon's biggest weapon, the Firebird, appears or reappears. And it's like the first time in decades that this, I guess, I'm assuming it's a bird if it's called Firebird, appears. So now there is hope and I guess we'll see where the story leads. All right, the next book is actually a middle grade book and I got it because I kept hearing so many booktubers just saying how much they loved it. And that is Small Spaces. Um, Catherine Arden is the author who supposedly uh, is the author of The Bear and the Nightingale, which I keep hearing is wonderful as well. So I definitely want to try this one out first. So our main character is Ollie, who witnesses a weeping woman trying to throw a book in a creek. But Ollie ends up taking the book and running away with the book and reading the book. And the story in the book is said hundreds of years in the past on a farm. Well, supposedly the next day, her school is taking a field trip to the farm and the woman she took the book from, I guess, owns the farm or works at the farm. And she also finds the graves of the characters in the book. So I think the main character, Ollie, I don't know if it's a he or she, let's look. Ollie is a girl. Ollie realizes that this is a true story, I guess, and some 
somehow the story is going to take off from there. It's a short book, but like I said, I've heard so many people just raving about it, so I wanted to try it out. All right, moving from middle school and back into YA, I have a study in Charlotte, which I believe is the first book in a trilogy or a series. So Charlotte is supposedly like the great, 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 great something granddaughter of Sherlock Holmes and is uh, one of our main characters. And then one of the other main characters is a guy named Jamie. Now, I don't know if he's also supposed to be like the great, 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 great grandson of the Watson from Sherlock and Watson, because the synopsis doesn't say, or just happens to be that his name is Jamie Watson. And supposedly, initially, these two people do not like each other, but then somehow they are both framed for a murder and they have to work together to figure it out, you know, because they don't want to be the ones stuck, you know, being charged with murder. It's set at a Connecticut prep school. I've heard lots of booktubers who love this uh, trilogy and I want to see what the hype is all about. All right, the next book is The Fascinators, which is, I believe, the last book I got from LitJoy. Uh, really quick, if you are enjoying this video and you want to see more videos, please hit subscribe. Please hit that bell, because as I always say, I do not have an upload schedule, but I do try to do it at least once a week. And please follow me on Instagram. So enough with the, that. Let's get on to this book. So in this book, we have three main characters, Sam, James, and Delia. And if I didn't say it before, this is a YA urban fantasy. So they live in a small town where magic is frowned upon. So they are, the three of them are the only members of the school's magic club. But supposedly a bunch of different events are going to start happening to them. That's going to kind of fracture their friendships. And that's all I know. But uh, I like urban fantasy. So I will definitely let you know once I read it, if you should read it. All right, we're coming down to the last book. Let me remind you also, since it's been a long haul, to please look in the description. I would love if you guys could watch Girly Girl Bookworm's video and please take a look at the resources to see if that's something that might help you feel less powerless, something you might want to contribute to. So the last book is Home Before Dark, another Riley Sager book. And from what I understand, this woman ends up inheriting her creepy house from when she was a child and it was so creepy her dad wrote a book about it supposedly in this story it's going to go back and forth from where we are reading her dad's book about what happened when she was a little girl and what made this house so haunting or scary and then we're seeing real time where she's an adult and she's inherited this house and she's in the house living there because she wants to remodel and she wants to sell it and so we're going to see what happens because she has never actually believed that her father was telling the truth about this place she thought he just made it up you know because he wanted to make some money but uh, hopefully we're going to get some answers so thank you so much for watching like I said if you would like to have a conversation about current events I'm always open for a conversation and I will see you guys in the next video bye bye